I really feel like in my spirit we are in for a good season. Some of the new single soon to be married couples have a little pre-drama and you know we like a little drama. I mean we want everybody to be happy and in love but we do like a tad bit of drama. Your girl Talisa Ray, and we are reviewing Yes, Married at First Sight season 10, the first episode. Welcome back if you was with me last year. Yes, honey. I mean, we ain't got no more Gregs and Keefs and Irises, but uh, we do got a couple Brandons and Taylors and Katie's, okay? A little bit of uh, what's her name? Mindy's, okay? Listen, <clears throat> so this first episode. We just gonna go kind of with the prescription of how the show aired. Um, if you rock with me for real, especially with these kind of shows, you know I like to go couple by couple. But I'm gonna just go as we go, okay? Now, also let me know if you wanna want me to review the match making episode. So that's the pre married at first sight. But let's just go and get right on into it. So this season, uh, oh, okay, the episode was first comes marriage, then comes love. <laughs> well, I mean, arranged marriages, they work like that all the time, right? But we talking about America. We have been uh, programmed that first comes love, then comes marriage. Mm -hmm opportunity for some people anyway we are in Washington DC and this year instead of four couples they've graced us with five couples uh, that are are ten people marrying complete strangers like I ain't never met you ain't never seen you ain't never breathed on you but I'm gonna let the experts dr. Cal uh, Dr. Pepper and Dr. Viviana choose for me and honestly we know that it's a bunch of people behind the scenes you know there's probably some computer algorithms and shit like they do on uh, what's that okay Cupid I'm sure they've got a few things that they use to determine if someone is compatible I mean if you've ever been on okay Cupid you know they ask you a bunch of questions and they match you based on your percentage of compatibility in sex and you know in politics and spirituality all kind of stuff now let me stop talking for y'all turn the channel <laughs> okay so when we open up we meet our first couple they are a black couple uh african-american couple miss taylor with her fine ass and brandon he cute for light skin okay listen no it's not light skin versus dark skin i just love me a chocolate brother somebody chocolate brother that i love but he got a little swag to him okay brandon is mr never plus one is that right yeah, yeah, Mr. Never Plus One, he is in beer sales, and his reason for wanting to be married is to have the American dream, you know, be married with 2.5 kids, the white picket fence, like, he wants the American dream. I don't know what that American dream looks like anymore, because in this day and age, it looks different for a lot of people, considering all the different types of relationships that we have that are in society um so i don't know what the what the dream looks like but his dream i guess is what it was in like 1950. fine I'm, you know i'm old school okay uh let's see so we see him bring his entire family together and uh to tell them you know he was chosen now honestly i really feel like they do share the information prior to like hey this is what i've done um, and so when it's time to all get together, that's why they all be there. But grandma, she, you know, grandma, like, I, I ain't happy. He knew that he was worried about her because she's a strong black woman, you know, no used to the traditional things. Meet a girl, court her a little bit, take her out, meet the family, fall in love, get married. Not somebody else chooses your wife, okay? Grandma not happy and she say I'm not happy and he say you know well you know if, if grandma's not on board you know I don't know what I'm gonna do. Child you didn't already signed up they're already visiting you we already know that you're going through with it. Taylor honey is a 
beautiful sister, okay? Body banging, honey. She is Miss Brains and Beauty because she is what? A research scientist. I forgot to say that Brandon is 33. Taylor is 27 years old, honey. And uh, I can't remember what it was that she said. Uh, but I think it was something like she has everything else and this is the one thing like she's tired of being by herself. She didn't travel with her friends and now she want a little boo, a little bae. She want a little spouse now so that she can experience life with him. That's what, you know, that's what I gathered. That's what I'm trying to remember because I didn't write it down. But we see her, looks like her mom, her aunt, and her cousin. And I think it's her mom and her, and her aunt, are they twins or are they just sisters? Because they look a lot alike. You know, you could tell that they're a little nervous, but they are very accepting of Taylor's decision to go on Married at, Mar married at First Sight. Now, um, I'm going to talk about what I think about these people as couples as we get closer to the end. Because I, I, I got some, you know, I, I have, of course, my own thoughts about them. Uh, and Pastor Cal feels like, you know, they're, they're ambitious and they're social butterflies or whatever. And that, that that's the reason why they're going to be compatible. Okay, 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 Pastor Cal. Ain't that what you said about Iris and Keith? You know, I don't know. But if y'all watch that matchmaking episode, then you would understand that he was really a little bit skeptical about the two of them. Um, then you have Mindy and Zach, okay? Uh, Zach is 32. Zach is a personal trainer, but he also, you know, is like big on health and the way you look. And you can tell by his appearance. And yes, he does work out. You know, for a little white boy, he kind of cute. Listen, I love a brother though, but for a little white boy, he cute. And what he says is he wants to be the husband that other that other people idolize. You know how women look at the husband. They're like, oh, you got such a great husband. He does. You know, he runs your bath water. He cares for you. You know, all that good stuff. Now, listen. Everybody knows that what's on the outside, sometimes on the inside of the house, it'd be a little different. And yes, he is ideal, but he's going to be having some issues too. Like, sometimes I'd be thinking that these people want to get married. It'd be... a unrealistic their reasoning is unrealistic however except for mindy mindy zach is 32 okay mindy is 34 and is a phys figure skating teacher i liked what she said in a nutshell was that she was whole and she was ready to find her spouse her spouse to find her and that two whole people can come together that's pretty much what i heard that she's whole and she's in a happy place and that she's healed and that's the reason that she wants to be married it was not for any other reason um she tells her sister that she's marrying a complete stranger her sister is super supportive but this is where we start finding out that the drama is continuing she's kind of like matt uh her she said my mom and dad are not with it or not for it they aren't gonna have anything to do with it they will not be at the wedding so i feel like viviana said that they're both active and that she's very optimistic and that's why she thinks the two of them will mesh well together our third couple is derek and katie <laughs> i don't have much written here about derek except for um he's a little too excited he's 26 he's a cyber tech and he is Mr. Uh, never been in love. And for me, that's a red flag. You want to be married, but you've never been in love? I mean, does anybody else find that I, like, I don't want to get married if I've never been in love. But again, arranged marriages all the time happen. And people have never been in love. Any background noise, that's my son you hear on his game, okay? He playing PS4. He's 12, if y'all don't know. I got a 12-year-old and a 23-year-old. I digress. Katie, who is 25, is a child therapist. Her family comes together. She shares the information with them, and they are all uh, uber excited for her, okay? Including her dad, okay? Her dad, he's sexy to me, okay, for a white boy. You know, I don't really like that many, but they got two on here that's all right. I wouldn't date Zach, but the daddy... The daddy is in my age bracket and baby I would date the daddy. Uh, no, I wouldn't because I like brothers. I digress. However, the thing about Katie is she says that she's having second thoughts 
because someone she previously dated has hit her up when he found out that she was going on married at first sight and is like you know what before i wasn't ready now i'm ready you know she liked him wanted to be with him but that wasn't what he wanted to do he wanted to have a good time but now she's becoming unavailable you know i love you and i want to be with you we can work make this work this is gonna be drama already okay and honestly katie Let's just wait. Let's just keep talking. Let's just keep talking about the couples before I go into, into this, these shenanigans that's occurred. I mean, two things already. I'm all like, drama, 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 drama. Uh, next is Jessica in Austin. Austin is 31. He is a network engineer. Um, and he's never lived with a woman before. I can't remember what they called him. I think they called him Mr. Mama's Boy. I don't know because he's a mama's boy. Um, and he says that he wants a family because he loves his niece so much and sees the relationship that his sister has with the niece and he wants that for himself. <sighs> a, not a good reason to want to be married. Maybe to be in love, maybe to meet your match, maybe, you know, to find, you know, some, but not to be married, not to make this full on commitment. Like I said, I'm going to say it again. These people's uh, reasons for being married is really unrealistic, are really unrealistic. Um, let me see. Then you have Jessica, who is 31. She is Miss Keeper. Mm -hmm. She's a keeper. Everybody keep telling her she's a keeper. And she feels like she's a keeper too. You know, because she's whole and wholesome and she's sweet, you know, and she's got a good job. She's a patient care manager at a hospital um, in the ICU. She manages over 100 nurses or something like that. Listen, I told y'all I watch the matchmaking couple. So they, that matchmaking episode. So they told us a lot about the couples in that episode. When she tells her identical twin sister who it's her identical twin sister, her brother-in-law, and her niece. When she tells her identical twin sister who urged her and prompted her to go on here, maybe it was as a joke because she was like, she didn't think she would get picked, honey. The brother said, I don't think this is a good idea. He straight out said, I don't think this is a good idea. But twin sister is the one who said, go for it, urged her to do it. Uh, and everybody's shocked that she was chosen. They just, you know, oh, just do something. Maybe you'll meet somebody in the line. Listen, they do the men and the women on separate days on purpose. She did say, you know, I, I don't know about this, but I want you happy. And if this is the way to go about it, then let's try it. And her reason for wanting to be married is because she doesn't feel like she's meeting her milestones you know get married you know have a baby by this specific time frame like her sister so she feels like she's behind the curve all right honey there is no time frame on when to get married but what do i know <laughs> i'm a widow okay what do i know you could ask me what i think and i would tell you our fifth and final couple is mika and michael Okay, Mika is 25 and she is a, so Mika is 25 and she's some kind of analyst, honey. I don't know what I wrote here, <laughs> but she's some kind of analyst and she is Miss Ambitious, okay? Um, and she's looking for her unicorn. You know, unicorn, mystical, ethereal, fictional creature, <laughs> you know? Her unicorn, somebody that's going to be concerned about her, that loves her. I mean, that has all the check boxes checked. Mm -hmm. A unicorn. You know, listen, everybody ain't going to have everything that we want. That's why a unicorn is the mythical, okay? Never before seen, okay? <sighs> now, the only thing I didn't like, she did have her family gathered and she was telling her family, on her mother's birthday so she started off with a toast to her mother's birthday happy birthday mom and oh by the way i got selected to be married they found me a match um i feel like that was the wrong space and opportunity but maybe because it was mom's birthday that was the only time that everybody was gonna be together i don't know because you made your mother's birthday about you and i don't you know i'm not really for that my birthday is my birthday don't come shut don't come stepping in on my parade okay don't rain on my parade i don't need no umbrella on my birthday shining 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 <laughs> 
Michael is 31 and is an education coordinator. We found out that he was adopted and that his mother died when he was three of cervical cancer. Um, his adopted mother and so he was um, raised by his aunt and his sister. Now um, he's excited that he's going to be the first person in his family to ever be married. No one has ever been married in his family. He will be the first. And um, I wrote down, I want him to blink. Not too much, but enough so it's not scary. Like you staring at us all the time, Michael. Look, I can't even do it. It was hurting my eyes. It was like he didn't blink for five seconds, which is a long time not to be blinking. He says he has a lot of stuff. They said he had a lot of stuff going on, but the thing that was touching to me was his sister. She was very excited for him and began to cry and was like, I'm happy for you. And I want you to have something that I haven't had. Even though I haven't had it, I want it for you so badly. Um, and that they would work because they're both professionally independent, ambitious, and go-getters. Okay, so now, as you know, they had they are told 10 days prior to getting married so at this point they need to actually get everything together quickly go sh go, go uh, dress shopping have their bachelorette party you know that kind of stuff so we see them go dress and tuxedo shopping uh, I was pretty much bored with the guys. Most of them chose blue. Most of them tried on blue. Blue did look really good. The only person that did not try on the blue was, uh, what's his name, Michael. Or he did try it on, but he went with the white tux. And I really thought that that was good because he's a chocolate man, okay? Not my kind, but definitely a chocolate man. Um, and so I was glad to see him in, in white. Uh, let me look through here and see if there's some things that stood out to me that I wrote. So with Jessica and I, Austin, I felt like uh, with Jessica, she needed to be more specific um, and, and know what she wants. She's easily swayed and you see that her twin is probably the dominant of the two of them because she went directly with the dress that her sister had chose from her for her. So maybe her sister is the oldest. I hope that we find out. I can't remember if they told us already. If they did, y'all let me know down below in the comments. But I feel like she's going to need to be decisive. And maybe her being married is a way to gain her independence from her sister. She did make mention that her and her sister talk all the time. That, that her sister is her other half. You know, which she is. I mean, they were in the womb together. Like, they do have that close-knit relationship. But she also said that that, is a, that has been a problem in past relationships how close her and her sister was or are i wrote down austin has no clue either that both of them are going to learn need to learn how to be more assertive and say what they want um out loud and not just go with the flow i did like the blue over the gray on him anyway with taylor and brandon did i even talk about brandon y'all I did, didn't I? Taylor and Brandon, okay, so maybe he's not so memorable because I swear to God, every time he showed up, I kept thinking, damn, what did they say about Brandon? What did they say about Brandon? Anyway, um, she makes mention that she wants a statement dress. And one of the dresses was like too old ladyish, but the one she ends up choosing is not popping or does not make a statement to me, but it's not my dress. So why do I care? But I'm just like, you want it to be fashion forward and stylish. Well, baby, this ain't it. And I, I also made mention that, um, they always have one couple that is super cute. One couple that's kind of quirky and awkward. One couple that may make it um, because they're on the same path and they might seem serious. This couple is the couple that seems to be a little more the... They match. They go together. They are attractive. Okay. Uh, that's Taylor and Brandon. Mika and Michael. Okay. I don't even remember what Mika's dress looked like. So I'm going to have to wait until she walks down the aisle to really make it. A statement about her dress um yeah I don't know and then I Michael like I said he got the white tux and he seems like a sensible nice guy you got Mindy and Zach and I felt for Mindy in this moment because she said I'm, I'm missing my mom these are the moments that I thought I would be sharing with her that she would be going dress shopping with me um, again he has the black black jacket 
And listen, I like, yeah, right. Exactly. That's like, I'm, I'm speeding through this. Like, if you feel like I'm feeling like, okay, yeah, I don't remember really none of it. I don't have much to say about any of that. Katie and Derek, she gets a super simple two piece. I mean, they're like wild by it. Me, not so much. But again, it's not my wedding. Like, it didn't move me to tears, okay? Um, and she actually cried. So that was her say yes to the dress moment. But again, she's talking about her second thoughts about the douchebag that didn't want her, that wants her now. And then Derek, he goes with, did he go blue? He went blue too, but he's really immature. Like, I, I don't know. He, did, you know, he's not the only one that whole, did that whole James Bond moment, but I just feel like he's giving me really immature vibes, but I'm gonna talk about that more in just a little bit. Okay, let's talk about the bachelorette and bachelor parties, okay? Uh, the ladies first, of course, they meet up and get to know one another. They sit together and, you know, kind of talk about, oh, I saw you or you looked familiar. You know, one of the ladies said, we talked a lot in the corner, so she's very familiar to me. Uh, Mindy ends up sharing with them here that her parents won't be coming to the wedding, that they don't approve of this process. They talk about like the first night and you know, it, you know, are you gonna sleep with your new husband? Katie is like, whatever happens, happens. So is Mika. She's like, I'm not gonna stress about it. Let's see how things go. Then you have, uh, I don't, what did Mindy? Well, Mindy said she wasn't gonna stress about setting any rules or expectations or boundaries. Uh, that's a red flag because we need to always set boundaries. And we need to understand what the other person's expectations are. Even when they say that they don't have any, everybody has some expectations in going into any relationship. And honestly, your expectation is that your relationship is going to work. That you will build a family and you will be together. That's an expectation. Regardless of what anybody says, that's an expectation. An expectation is that he will respect you, that he's attracted to you. You know what I'm saying? That he will be honest with you. Those are expectations. Anyway, um, however, Jessica and Taylor are like, yeah, no, it's a no for me. I'm not sleeping with this man. He's not a stranger. He's a stranger. Uh, Taylor's all like, I'm not with one night stands, okay? So I'm not going to just sleep with this man. Listen. I know some of y'all are like, oh, well, it's not a one night stand. It's your husband. It is your husband. You are going into this. But it is a thing about sleeping with a stranger. He might be my husband, but I don't know anything about him except for what I see when I walk down the aisle. I won't know, you know, what his name is, his full name is, where he was, where he was born. But I'm not passing judgment on anybody that decides to sleep with their husband, the stranger, the first night. I mean... I know some of y'all wholesome and stuff and ain't never had no one night stands or nothing. Ain't never did nothing wild, but that ain't me. I've had one night stands. I've been a little wild, wild, you know, I've had fun, you know, you know, listen, and I ain't saying that tomorrow I won't have no fun. So I'm not passing judgment on anybody at any moment. Derek is so enthralled and intrigued by Zach's hair that he makes mention of it in his confessional. Is it that serious or you got something you want to tell us? I mean, are you sexually fluid? If you are, it's fine. Make sure you tell your new wife that, okay? I mean, because that's the vibe I got when you were sitting out on the patio with your friends, that you might be sexually fluid. And you just need to divulge that information, okay? There's a lot of things and a lot of dynamics in marriages that don't work in some, that work in others. And you need to be honest about what your affinities are, okay? Don't go into nothing tricking nobody. I'm just saying, she might be with the shits and might do a little pegging if you want her to. Look it up, okay? If you don't know what it is, look it up. <laughs> Crack me up. Um, Brandon is now doing a lot of talking, and I, I see him as a leader as I see Zach as a leader. Like, they will be able to lead um, because they're taking control of, like, the conversation. And um, Brandon is like, you know what? I'm just concerned... If she gonna like me or not. Like if she sees me, if she's gonna like me. Like they have the conversation and they say, oh, you know, we're, I'm not concerned about looks or whatever. Oh, okay. So you telling me if she ain't your type, you're gonna be cool with it? That's a lie. Cause Matt pretended like a uh, homegirl. What was her name? Can't think of her name. Right? Amber was his type whole time. He didn't like her. He just went along with the flow for the money. 
okay because he was homeless anyway <laughs> but that's my thing like we have to be honest like yes men are physically attracted to you first before they go any further they have to be tr attracted to the outward appearance now y'all can disagree with me but do that down below in the comments but i'm gonna just tell you they're always attracted to this before anything else they don't even get to see or hear your mind where well, we may not be attracted we, we got the same kind of issue we're not visual creatures though because if you sound good and you make me laugh if i wasn't interested in you before i can be interested in you now michael says something like the best expectation is no expectation so you're not disappointed well that's why you've been swiping right all this time i've been swiped left on or whatever okay because you don't know what you want and you're going with the flow. Everybody has an expectation for a relationship. Everybody needs to set boundaries in every relationship they have. Family, friend, intimate, I don't care. With your pastor, everybody has boundaries and you have an expectation when you're starting a relationship. Okay, if you don't, tell me so down below in the comments. Tell me you go into it blindly. Okay, I'm not saying that you're not going to let things go, you know, you're not going to flow with things, but the things that you expect. You expect for them to be concerned about you. You expect for them to call you. You expect for them to spend some time with you. You expect there are certain things that you want, and I don't care what nobody say. If you tell me that you don't down below in the comments, we're going to agree to disagree because I'm going to just be like, mm, okay. Now, the what i did like about michael and brandon was that they both said because they talked about the expectation of sex on the first night um and what they wanted both of them said if they just i just want them to be comfortable and happy if you want to sit up all night and talk all night about what we've been through and who we are i'm willing to do that whatever is comfortable for them that is what i want to do too and so Zach, though, doesn't seem to believe the fellas. Don't think that they would, especially smooth talking Brandon. Listen, he do got a little swag on him. He got a nice voice and he probably can talk your panties off. But I believe him when he said if she just wants to sit and have a conversation all night, that's what we gonna do. I believe that he is one of those people that will make sure you're comfortable. Like, I'm not finna be trying to get something that somebody don't want to give me. That's the vibe. Like, he seems like a gentleman to me. If you agree with me, do so down below in the comments. So now we have these bachelorette and bachelor parties. And this year, they ain't got no strippers. This year, they dancing on, you know, their guests or whatever. You know, their friends and, and bosses and whatnot. And uh, you can already see that Taylor... And Katie, they with it, okay? Like, you know, Taylor's like, yeah, I'm reserved. I want certain things. But she with the shits. She gave that good lap dance. And Katie is just wild. She hot in the panties. She just want, she just want to give it up. Give it up, give it up, give it to me. Um, Mika, I was like, Mika, what are you doing? Why are you following along with what Katie doing? You know how to, you know how to slow wine at, at minimum. And, oh, poor Jessica, her awkward self dancing. She all awkward and offbeat. What she say? White girl dancing. But, honestly, it was cute because she was so wholesome and um, just, you know, unsure. Okay? Like, innocent. That's the right word. But she gonna need to beef it up a little bit. Um, and then you have Mindy. If it wasn't for it being her boss, I think Mindy would have would have would have showed us a little something too. Okay, would have showed us something. Over at over blah, 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 blah. also at the bachelorette party, uh, Katie decides to let Mika and Mindy know her plight that she's having second thoughts because of this guy, this fuck boy. <laughs> that has decided he wants to come back into her life okay he wants her now because she's unavailable he wants to stop it like you didn't like me before so now all of a sudden i'm what you want i got what you need i don't think so i think that you just don't want nobody else to have me and if i don't take this opportunity i'm gonna be miserable but I, get, I, I guarantee you she gonna text him or something throughout. I guarantee you they gonna see him on the street or something. Honey, I guarantee you that Katie is gonna be a full hot mess, okay? Thinking that she made the wrong decision. It's because she wanted, let's call him Joey, okay? She wants Joey um, and knows what Joey has already and she doesn't know anything about her future husband. Listen, I get the uncertainty, but what you should be certain of is that Joey didn't want you at first. 
Don't waste your time on Joey. Joey is full of shit. Joey probably got holes lined up. Don't waste your time, Katie. I hope and pray to God that you just move forward throughout this process. Okay, I can't wait to see what this comes what comes out of this. Over at the bachelor at, over at the bachelor party, okay, you see Austin with his little friends and he's so kind he's so dorky. They so dorky, they so young. I, I don't even know. I'm all like, I don't know about this. I don't I don't know about this. But I guess these people are supposed to be in their late twenties, early thirties, I suppose. Like child uh i guess life life my life experiences are just giving me red flags with these couples a couple things that stand out to me is one zach is nervous okay zach is nervous he's eating chips um michael and austin just seem not quite ready um and then you have michael I don't even remember Brandon at the bachelor party. I'm going to just be honest with you. See how it's, he's unfor, no, he's forgettable. That's what it, that's what you are. Like, I cannot remember. I don't even have a note written down about Brandon at the bachelor party. However, Michael, his friend Justin is like, I just want to know why, why now? Why this way? Why? You know, which is valid. I mean, I know my friends know that I'm the one that would do this kind of thing, but they would be the ones asking me, but why? This don't make no sense. Why would you go about this like you're desperate? Okay. That's how my friends would ask me. Um, and his response, Michael's response was, you know, you're never really re ready for marriage. You never know what to expect in marriage. And I'm going to have to agree that is true. You don't know what to expect in marriage. However, when you go the traditional route of meeting someone, you know what to expect in your spouse. You know what they like. You know what their personality is. You know what their belief system is. You know what their morals are. So that's not you going in blind. This is you going in blind. So yes, you don't know what to expect when you get together. But you know who the person is. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying that, again, a lot of this stuff is unrealistic. Let's talk about one more thing before I give you what I think about the couples, okay? Um, the wedding day is at the Western Georgetown. I'm glad to see that Mika's glam squad is natural because she's a natural sister. And so they have some natural hair care people come in and take, her, take care of her hair and do her hair. I also said that I did a wow because she said she wanted someone tall with a beard and that is Michael okay and he said he he wants a natural sister because his whole family is natural and that's what he likes and I thought well they got that right so that's a plus for both of them so Katie I didn't say who she was she is Miss Ready right now we see her uh, because Katie and Derek are the first ones to be married we see her have a breakdown about having second thoughts about this man that keeps texting her and calling her bitch blocky like, but she's 25, but her mom is like, you know, I've never been one to one to, you know, get in her way or tell her what to do. No, this is one of those times that you have to have somebody talk some sense into you. Like, girl, he didn't want you before. Now all of a sudden he wants you. Now all of a sudden he wants you because you're not accessible anymore. Now he wants you and want to be with you. Okay. We see um, like glimpses of the next episode of her like I can't do this I'm gonna run well we know she ends up marrying him we even see in the you know um, snippets that they've had sex so we know that they end up going forward but let's talk about the couples okay let's talk about them so Taylor and Brandon um, really kind of two different worlds she's a research scientist he's a beer salesman not to say that the two relationships can't work but is she going to look down up on him because of his job and she's probably used to dating people that also are you know very educated in that manner we don't know if brandon is educated or not um they are cute together but i see possibly a, a, a an issue arising and if they're both genuine the way brandon seems to be genuine about wanting to be in a relationship they quite possibly will work okay uh mindy and zach i'm actually kind of pulling for them thinking that they will actually work and will mesh really well i really think that mindy is ready completely mature 
uh, has had some experiences in her life, has healed from those experiences, and is ready to share her life with someone else. Zach, all I think is, is Zach is all about himself and the way he looks. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that, you know, and, and hopefully he finds Mindy attractive because though he says, you know, I've dated beautiful women before and none of them have matched, you know, Mindy is attractive, okay? I mean, she's not drop dead gorgeous, so is that gonna be a problem for him? Not to mention, Mindy's coming in with baggage because her mother and father don't want to be a part of the process. So what does that say about your family unit? I'm serious. What does that say about your family unit? Are they going to accept him? Is this going to be a tumultuous relationship? Because, you know, you, the parents don't accept him. Like, that's a thing. Like, that's something that we always talk about and we think about. Um, Austin and <laughs> Jessica. Uh, Jessica really needs to find her identity separate from her twin. Hello, I'm just being honest. Austin, if you guys watched the matchmaking episode, is uh, when they asked about what he wants in a what he wants in a wife or a woman or whatever. His answer is always defaulted to, "Well, my mom would like my mom likes this. My mom, my mom, my mom. Like he's definitely a mama's boy, um, and she definitely has a serious connection with her sister. So maybe it won't be a problem because they both have these codependent relationships with these family members. I don't know, but I'm just saying, in my life, in the world that I live in, a mama's boy ain't gonna be it because the mama go out, you know. Oh, my mama, I gotta go check on my mama. Is the mama gonna be the head of household?" Who, who gonna be running the house, okay? Then we have um, Derek and Katie, okay? Derek definitely seems way too immature to me at this time. I'm not sure why they chose him or Katie to be in a marriage or as a match. Katie, though she is mature, has a dilemma with another man that she was dating just a couple months prior to being selected to be married at first sight. That seems to be a problem. Then we have Mika and Michael. I don't have a good gauge on the two of them yet. Um, I think Michael is in this process is because he's having bad luck with dating. Um, possibly because he might not be someone's type. You know, he's a little odd, a little awkward. Uh, you know, he's got some things going on. And then there's Mika. I, I don't have a good gauge on Mika yet, but as we, but as we continue to move forward, you know I'm gonna have a lot. You know I'm gonna have a lot of opinions that are all mine <laughs> on everything. We will agree on some and not on others, but I'm excited about this entire season. You guys, let me know down below in the comments what your first thoughts are on uh, these five couples. I am your girl, Talisa Ray. Thank you so much for watching my review of Married at First Sight, season 10, number 10, episode one, first comes marriage, then comes love. If it is your first time visiting my channel, you should be clicking that red subscribe button right about down and that notification bell so that you can be alerted of when I upload my Married at First Sight reviews. Lastly, for me, because you like me and I'll know it's real, give me a thumbs up. Hugs and kisses and lots of love. I'll catch you on the next video.